a peaceful Trinity Sunday to you, the Sunday after Pentecost. The Pentecost of, of course I still love you. In a time now where we have the pandemic, we have a virus, we have rioting, we have protesting, we have name calling, we have accusations, we have people trying to make peace, we have peacemakers getting beaten up, we have police who are trying to defend the peacemakers getting beaten up, we have peacemakers beating up the police, police beating up peacemakers, people feeling totally confused, like a one layer dip now has become a seven layer dip. And I'm afraid it's gonna get worse. Almost like being exiled in the time of Moses, when Moses said, I gotta get out of here, get out of Egypt. And the Lord led him out of Egypt with his people to something better. But it just didn't happen. You know, the one thing that happened is that Moses came down and he said, the Lord is a merciful God, quick in mercy, slow to anger, rich in kindness. So therefore, if we are made in the image and likeness of God, we should be quick to mercy, slow in anger, rich in kindness. Not so that we can get to heaven, it's so that we can find that integral peace today in our hearts. So important. Life matters. Human life, no matter what color. Vegetative life, no matter what colors. The animate life, no matter what colors or, or degrees or whatever use. Because it's all part of the balance of life. And we come to see the 3D, the trinity, the three-dimensional aspect of this love, this life force, our character, our fundamental character being lived out today. But it all depends on how that character was not only given to us at birth or confirmed upon us in baptism, but nurtured as children through life, through family, through school, through the lack of family, lack of life, lack of school, through opportunities, through successes, through achievements, through those who couldn't be successful, who couldn't get educate, educated, who couldn't realize achievements. So how we have our opinions is basically, a, the basic question is a mystery. Because our opinions come from our character. Our character is the goodness that has evolved through our surroundings. But at the end of the day, our character, our software, this body's the hardware, our software needs to be nurtured, which is why we have church. A lot of people like to go back to church, open the doors, let the church in, because it's a safe place, perhaps, or the figures, the memories of weddings and funerals, all the, the people in the community, not just the, the pews, but people in the pews, provides that assurance that, yes, of course I still love you. And I love everybody, and my love comes from everybody in different forms, depending on how one's character was nurtured and realized to be what it is. When we get off key and we discover that our, how we're acting is not with our character, we say, I'm sorry. And that's why we have a forgiveness factor here even forgiving those who are wrong, but forgiving them to say, but I can make you better. Not because I'm better, but because I've been there. I've been rejected. I've been divorced. I've been in jail. I've been poor. I've been busted. I've made mistakes. I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that. And Father says, okay. Just like Jesus on the cross said, okay. So be better. Become and that's why I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. That's why I want you to come to church. Not to go to church, but come to a place to be church. Now, frankly, St. Peter, who's buried in the grotto below St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, if he rose from the dead and climbed up the stairs and looked at this big old basilica and all its beauty and all its art, I know he would say, and where did you get this idea that this was important? 
Because it's not. I've seen great churches crumble, but we're still church. So, my friends, let's come to church. Let's come, though, looking for our character developed. How am I being called my software to be improved and not be distracted by the viruses? Let's come to church. I feel you're a carpenter. Uh, well, it's been a while. No matter, we can always use a good one. Hurry up now. We have a bond to race and a day to do it. Race your funds to hail. Good luck. Your hole is better now. Yeah, it's pretty much healed. Good. Then you can go home. We found good the bits. We wish to. You look still. We wish to. We're ready for all. Yes, sir. We can. You do it already.
Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Thank you, and with my spirit, with our spirit, God continues to be with us. God doesn't go away. Oh, we have ups and downs. We have it when we know it, when we don't know it. Even the apostles went through the same stuff. Even in the darkness of Jesus' day, I'm not always sure that he was full of the happy of faith, but he, was, he knew about it, and he knew that God was with him and that his life force, his intimacy was with him. And nothing was going to snuff that, but it still had to be hard because he was different. And we are called to be different as well as we ask the Lord now for mercy for when the times that we haven't acted as people who are his temple, people who are his church filled with his spirit. So, Lord God, you are the word of life. When our words snuff out the lives of others, they demean people when we lessen others with our words Lord have mercy <clears throat> in Christ God you are the fullness of yourself in our humanness and our humanity in Jesus when we see how Jesus lived we see our own inner dispositions when we choose other dispositions which just rob us of the peace you want us to have Lord Christ have mercy and Spirit, God, you are that within us now that yearns for the light, for the love, for the relief, for the comfort. When we are supposed to be all those things, but we have other things to do, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. He forgives us our sins and leads us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, bum, 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 and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest. Dun, dun, dun. And on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lord God, Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Glory to God in the highest bum, bum, bum. and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. How's that working for you? Let us pray. So, Father God, we come today now on this great feast day. Sanctify us. Pour out your gifts of the Spirit. And may we be filled with the same zeal of the gospel as it was first proclaimed and lived and saved. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Word of God. So, so our first reading is going to be from the book of Exodus. And it speaks about how Moses is leading the Hebrew people away from Egyptian tyranny. They were marginalized they were racially biased against and Moses is leading them now remember Moses was Pharaoh's son converted and is leading these people now to Mount Sinai and though Mount Sinai is known as the place of the Ten Commandments it's also the place where God the Father reveals himself to Moses as Lord and he reveals something about his nature for early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity, Moses bowed to the ground in worship. And then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our journey in my company. For this is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness, not their wickedness, pardon our wickedness and our sins and receive us as your own for who we are. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let's think about that. With so many things God's been good to me I have family and friends Who share in all I do But if I church in Corinth. They were called Corinthians. Paul, rough guy, persecuted Christians, experiencing the love of life, the love of God, the love of himself, the love of neighbor, changes. And now he's the leader of a community 
as one who didn't get it, but one who sure gets it and wants to get it. And his life is evidence of that. What made him change to find such inner peace? A reading from Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you all. Greet one another with a holy kiss. And all the holy ones will greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I can remember a kid asking me once, what does hallelujah mean? And I go, well, when do we sing it? He goes, well, before the gospel. I said, well, what do you think hallelujah means? And he said, with two teeth missing, unspeakable joy. So the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel, unspeakable joy, according to John. Bless my mind that I may understand. I bless my mouth that I may proclaim. And I bless my heart that I may figure this out and live it out. John says, God so loved the world. This is the proof. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. So that now everyone who believes in him who possesses the goodness might not perish, but may be better because of it. Eternal life. For God did not send his son or himself into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe, who's been shown but does not believe, they condemn themselves because they chose not to believe in the name and the power and the glory of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. God so loved the world. We are so loving. We can become so loving. Father, God so loved the world. In Jesus, boy, look how lovable humanity can become. Taking the bullet, so to speak, the nails, so to speak, the slander, so to speak, the rejection, so to speak, so that others may be better. And I continue that, and they continue that through the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Spirit. And we have reopened the churches, so to speak, but have we reopened our hearts? We've, we've opened the doors. We've disinfected them. We've kept our distance. We're wearing masks. But have we allowed ourselves to be enculturated, in spiritual, uh, spiritualized because of this great gift? Did we go to church? And why do we go to church? You know, I was thinking about the SpaceX thing that went up in the air. Remember that awesome thing? And it went up in the air. And then when the first stage is done and the astronauts go, okay, we got far to go. See you, about, see you later, uh, first stage. The first stage sits and lands and returns on a barge. The barge is, na is titled, Of Course I Still Love You. First stage separated from Earth. First stage separated from its purpose at that stage. Sits back down and says, of course I still love you. Meaning, good job, you did your best, and we're going to do it again. We're going to reuse it. We're going to take what we learned for the better. And I'm hoping and praying today that we will take what we are learning and use it for the better. I truly believe in my software, given to me, loaded in me, downloaded in me, uploaded from me. 
And throughout my life, it has been nurtured. It has been robbed. It has been beaten. It has been in jail. It has been demeaned. I also, with my great spirituality, have demeaned others. I have ostracized others. I've been made better by other people. And I'm a different person without a grudge, though I've wanted to loot, though I want to protest. But I'm still a better person because I'm resurrected, I'm empowered, and I'm given the Holy Spirit because of prayer, because of experiences of, of course I still love you. But you know, not everyone can hear that because of how their, their story is. Jesus went to the Gentile and the poor and the outdriven, the outsider and women, not just because those poor people, it's because they're going to get the message more because there's less greed. There's less, I need to be number one. There's this less sense of be great. And if I am made greater, it's not for the glory of myself. It's the glory of Number one, I didn't get it. I was blind, but now I see, and I want to help others see. You see? Not just because I was blind and I got screwed, and I want to go back now and, and tell everybody else who is blind like me, who doesn't have the courage to try. They're saying, I will help you try. I will walk with you try. I will listen to you try. You see? It's so three-dimensional. It's so trinity it's not this and also with you. It's not also this, thanks be to God. It is, I am alive by the grace of God, and what for? To become the richest man in the world and to spend my life protecting it? To become the greatest man in the world and God help anyone who gets in my way? It's because I've been blessed. Not lucky, blessed. Because some poor guy came out of his way to look at me through some reason and say, this is a good kid. Thank you, Sergeant Ballinger. This is not a bad guy. Thank you, Bill Cody, Father Bill. This guy is funny, Father Enda. This guy can become our student body president, Mike Warmbrock, Mike Tucci. These, you see, this guy is not bad. And then once I finally believed it, I, once I started going to jails and seeing only non-white people, going to juvenile halls, seeing only non-white people, I started to think, what? Seeing riots and riots and riots now with white people, are we growing? Are we getting it? And therefore, what will we become of it? So, if that doesn't make sense, then I'm sorry. If you disagree with me, I'm sorry. But I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just asking all of us, as I ask myself, my opinions, my judgments, where do they come from? Where do they come from? And do we still want to go from there? Or do we still want to go and find the more of God in there and out there? Three. Three. Three tweets in one. Touch me now and let me see.
poison that burned like a fire. All I ever wanted was a reason to drown in your eyes. I never knew sleep so restless. Mm, empty arms so cold. That's not the way it's supposed to be. It ain't the spell that I was a soul. But give it in the night time. Ain't no kill for the pain. You gotta wait until the water. You gotta learn. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves may be offered to God, our loving Father. And may the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. So grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the mystery and our beingness in Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes, Father, it is right to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, through whom you made all things incarnate by the Holy Spirit, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a church, us, a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he entrusted his passion to break the bonds of death and manifest new life. So we join with the saints and angels and acclaim you as Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread in his hands and he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave himself to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat from it, for this you are my body. This is my body which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took a cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of a new and everlasting covenant, life in you, in your blood. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, as you become again. So as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's life, death, and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread of life, this cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We pray that in partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops and faithful. Remember our sisters and brothers who died in the hope of resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that we may someday join with Mother Mary and Joseph and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may be merit co-heirs to eternal life, praising and glorifying you in who we are through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's hold together now to our God, our Mother, and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our hearts. Keep us free from sin and safe from all distress. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other God's peace. Peace on this planet will come only from all of you. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. So behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who receive him. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Father, Lord, we have received your Son, Jesus, by the grace of the Spirit. As Father, you are in all life. As Son, you put yourself in our humanness and made it good and empowered. And by Spirit, you entrust us now to take your life and to take your love and to share it as you would share it with the world in relationship, in connection. May we spend some time appreciating all life, vegetative, animal, human, all potential, all ways that we can enhance and nurture the lives of others, and especially have an eye out for those who have not been as blessed, so to speak, as we are, not because God didn't bless them, but no one was there to nurture the blessings to them. Just like the times I've missed it, I give some slack to those who have missed it. Violence is not an issue. It has, I mean, it's an issue that cannot be used to talk about peace. Only giving, even if it's the sake of giving your life for the betterment of others, as did Christ our Lord. Amen. It's been great being with you. As you know, we have Father Ken's Vineyard, the new website, F-A-T-H-E-R-K-E-N dot O-R-G. We're still building in Kenya. We're healing in Haiti. There's sickness everywhere. Everything stopped. There's orphanages in Tijuana that we're helping through Sister Margaret, where people are being rehabilitated because of the likes of Sister Sean and Father George. Mike Grover is still in a nursing home. A lot. And I'm not going to let that darkness eat me up. I'm going to still try to be the light. Please help. Okay? Your prayers are great. Your money is great. Your hellos are great. You can always email me at my name, kendesey at aol.com. K-E-N-D-E-A-S-Y at aol.com. 